Hey YouTube, Savon Draws here. Today we're taking a look at Toon Squid for the iPad. So we're going to jump straight into it. Uh, real quick, I'd like to say thank you for a thousand subscribers. And if you want to see more Toon Squid information, just subscribe to this channel. So let's get straight into it. So when we jump into the program, we're going to be greeted with our home screen. And from here, we can just click the plus button to get started on a new project. Then you can select your width and height. And then you can also select your workflow and your FPS. So I'll start with 12 FPS. I just drag it and I click create. So from here, I'm just going to show you how to navigate the program. So to navigate the program, we pinch in with our finger, two fingers, and just pinch in and out to zoom in. To rotate, we just use two fingers and move left and right. Then for layers, we click on the right side. This is just your drawing layers, not your animation layers. Then we also have our sidebar, which will show properties for tools, um, how we can move things across coordinates in the program. If, you, if you're missing something, you usually come here. Then we have an undo and redo button. We can make the timeline show itself just by clicking this button, or it might get moved back down. We can play our animation. We can put on onion skin. We can set our animation to loop. We can move through our frames with these in the bottom left. And then we have our tools right here. We can go to settings by clicking on actions. We can also export and we can check the manual for Toon Squid. Then we have a library, which I'll go into later in this tutorial. And we can go back to our home screen by clicking on projects. So now I'm going to jump straight into our tools for our tools. We first have our drawing tools, which of course we have the brush. And like this, we can just draw, of course. We can change our size right here and change our opacity right here. And we can undo with two fingers and redo with three fingers. We can hold our drawing just like Procreate to create a line. We can edit that line by clicking here. We can rotate it by clicking the circle that's away from it. Then we have our own brush studio that we can check out. We can edit our brushes by clicking on it and clicking edit. And from here, we can add different options to our brush and it will update live. We have tons of different brushes and we also have vector brushes. So for our vector brushes, they will have vector smoothing, which will smooth the lines more depending on how big of an amount you set it to. With vector brushes, it's possible to draw off of the screen. As you can see, this is not possible with raster brushes, but it's pretty helpful. I think that's one of the biggest reasons to use vector brushes over raster brushes in this application if you don't want a very artistic looking brush because the vector brushes do look a little worse. We also have keyboard shortcuts. You can click on actions and go to settings and click on keyboard just to check all of the different keyboard commands in this application. And they're all listed out right here. We of course have our erasers, which work the same way as the brushes. Then we also have fill brushes that where we can just draw and it will create a fill. This is very good for coloring things in. We can also make it so that things fill behind instead of in front like they normally would. So we would just click on a fill behind brush and now it will fill behind. The way to do this in the settings of your brush is we go to stroke and then we go to draw behind and make sure that this button is ticked. We also have our smudging tools so if we have two different colors, we can use the smudge tool and blend them. We just need to make sure we're on a brush that blends very well. Then we have our fill tool where we can just make a drawing and fill it in. You can use this slider to change how well it fills. But in general, I would recommend just using the fill brush over the fill tool as the fill tool often leaves these little 
gaps in between your drawings in this application. So hopefully that gets fixed. We also have the eyedropper tool, which we can also use a gesture for. We can just hold our finger on any tool and we'll select the color, but we can also click the eyedropper tool and just drag to whatever color we want to take. Then we have our text tool. We just click text, then we click something, we type. And from there, we can edit our text by clicking on the properties bar. And then we can do things like edit the opacity, edit the font, the font size, the font style, all of that good stuff. And then you can also animate your text by using the end trim function. We also have the path tool, which will help us to create essentially lines and shapes. So we just click somewhere and we can also create more paths just by clicking anywhere in our path. And the cool thing about this is we can also use the end trim and start trim function on this. So we can trim it and we can animate any of these. And then we, if we want to, we can also create a fill. This is more helpful for actually completed shapes. Then you can change your color just by doing this. So if we want to do something like make a square, we can just deselect this. So we'd probably have to make a new drawing layer. And we can do that. And the fill makes much more sense <laughs> on this completed shape. And we can also change the corners, change the style, all types of things. I really think you should explore the properties tab whenever using any of the tools to make sure everything it can do. Going forward, we have our transform tool. You can just select anything on the selection tool with add, or you could click minus to take away from your selection. Now we're only selecting here. And from there, we can do all different types of transformations to whatever we're moving. So we can do perspective. We can do warp. Then we can do uniform, so we just scale it. And we can do freeform to distort it. And we can also flip our drawings horizontal or vertically. And we can put on this magnet function for more stabilization when we're moving our shapes. And take it off for freedom. Then if you ever want to just get rid of your drawings, you can just select multiple layers and hit the delete button. It's very important to note that raster layers, path layers, and vector layers will be separated. So if you're using a vector brush, it'll create a new drawing layer. A raster will create a new layer. A path will create a new layer. Something cool we also have is masks, which will only draw inside of our drawing. So if I made a new layer, and I toggled it as a mask. I can do this and only paint inside the lines. And we can also apply this on our animation layers down here. So if we jump straight into animation, it's very easy. We can just pull up our timeline or leave it down. And it will automatically create keyframes once we jump to the next frame, you can turn on your onion skin just by clicking right here. And if we check our animation, we can just click play here. And nice, if we wanna loop it, we just click the loop button. If we ever wanted to see more or less of our onion skin, we can click on the onion skin right here. And we can show how many drawings we want to see before our current drawing. So I'll come 
to this frame. If I wanted to see five drawings behind, I would make sure I drag it to five drawings and then I would move this up. If you don't want everything to move together, then you want to make sure that you get rid of this magnet. And now you can move each frame individually to determine its opacity on the onion skin. You can always turn it back on and you can do the same for drawings that are in front, which are the next frames. And then you can also, instead of just choosing it to show which drawing is before, you can make it show frames. So if we put th set this to two and then our frame was two frames long, we'd only see what's two frames before. But on drawings, we see two drawings before up to here. So we can also set and start and end for our loop. So if I set my loop to start here and to end here, it would only play that portion of the animation. We can show see more of our layers if we create more layers and we just drag the top of our timeline up and down. If you want to make if you want to edit multiple frames, you can double click with your pencil and drag. So now we have all the frames selected. We can make the duration for all of them much longer. So now we'll make them all last for two frames and the animation will be much slower. And the nice thing we can do is we can also drag and select all of these. And then we can edit all of our frames at the same time. So if we move them all, when they're all selected, they'll all move to this side of the, the screen. We also have out of pegs, which will allow us to move our onion skins to show it in a different place. So we can toggle it by clicking on these little circles and we can toggle it for each frame we want to do it for individually. After you toggle it on, you can just move your, your frame for onion skinning. And if you ever want to turn it off, you can just toggle it here or you can toggle every out of pegs off in the middle. We can also change our onion skin color just by selecting here. And then we can make it the original color of the animation just by toggling on original colors. Now, as you can see, when we change the duration, of a frame, all of our frames move with that frame, but we can change that by taking off this magnet at the bottom. And if we move the frames, they separate. Now, another thing you could do with the animation in this program is you could do keyframing. You can just click this diamond right here. You can select whichever thing you want to change, like position or rotation. So I could click add keyframe and position and move this here and it will animate. Now I could also animate the end trim and the start trim by making keyframes in it by clicking this. And now we have an animation that's moving and a trim is changing. Now, another very powerful thing about Toon Squid is symbols. So symbols just create a whole animation clip from whatever you select. So let's say I have this animation where the mouse is moving. Now I could turn this into a symbol by selecting all of it and clicking copy. Then if I go to library, I can create a new animation clip. It will be the same height as my animation. And then I can just paste my frames. And here we have just my mouth talking. Now, if I went back into my regular drawing, I could go to the library. And now I have my mouth animation. And now I can just click on it and we see it comes up here and it shows at the top. 
Of course, we want to place it in the right place. So we'd come and match it up. You can also create a symbol for a singular frame by just clicking on it and clicking create symbol. Let's say if you wanted, if you had like a drawing you just wanted to keep using, it would be very helpful. But since we're working with multiple mouse, something we can do is we can create lip syncing. We can go back into our symbol by holding on it and clicking edit. Now, if we make markers, we can choose exactly which mouth we want in any part of the animation. So we'll set this to open mouth. We can name it right here. And we'll make it last two frames. We'll make this closed mouth. Now, if we go back to our scene, we can select whatever frame we want the mouth to change at. So we can go to our properties and go down to select from markers, and then we can change how it looks on frame one. However we want. And then we can go to frame two and do the same. And now it's moving however we want, and we can set up lip, lip syncing easily. So if we want to import audio, we could go to this button down here and click on audio. We can also import video here, as well as images and image sequences. We can even import GIFs, which are transparent. So it's a very robust importing system. Then we just click audio. And now I have an audio clip. We can edit the volume of our audio by keyframing. And then let's say we want it to be louder. We can just add a keyframe and slide the. Now, if we wanted to lip sync all of these, we just take off these keyframes. We'd extend all of our layers. And then we just keep selecting from the markers wherever the, yep. wherever the sound goes up. Yep. 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 We just open the yep. mouth. Of course, this isn't the perfect way to do it, but we do see that we have some lip syncing set up. That's pretty easy. Subscribe. subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget. And then we can do the same thing for, let's say, like a blinking animation. Get. So I already have this set up as a marker. Now I can make him blink and open his eyes. To subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget. So, yeah, as you can see, Toon Squid is a very powerful animation app for mobile. And I'm hoping to see it develop itself further because I really do like this application now that I'm using it again, which is also why I made this tutorial. So if you guys have any other tips you would like in the comments, just let me know. Uh, thanks again for a thousand subscribers. Subscribe if you haven't already and appreciate you for watching.